Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mike Larkin, the host of On the Mic with Mike. And folks, I love what I do. Get to interview people of all facets of life. And as one of the many facets of life we get to see here is the amazing Miss Elizabeth Spragans, formerly known as Alora Jensen. You, my friend, are doing such amazing things. How are you doing tonight? Hi, John. I'm so I'm so happy to be back. I really appreciate you having me on the show. It has been so long since I've talked to you. A lot has changed. I want to know what's going on with you. Sure. So with me, folks, as you guys have seen with this show, I've been doing a lot of great talents from all facets of life, whether it be said adult entertainment industry, said music, wrestling, what have you. I've gotten the chance to do a lot of great work for Capital Championship Wrestling, Lingerie Fighting Championships, really showcasing that message of beauty, strength, and dominance, the three key elements that make women the work of art that they are. And the main thing is I woke up this morning, so I'm happy. I think it's another blessing, right? I say that all the time, all the time. And, you know, I really appreciate that you you do into lingerie what wrestling. I watched your interview with Brandy May. I absolutely love her. And I said, oh, my gosh, I have to be on the show because she she inspires me. I love that woman. She's one of those women that it's one of those things what I love about her, too, is very much strong, both internally and externally, has such a wonderful spirit, really went into Nushe Boutique, which she's doing with very custom lingerie fitting. She's done so many things from erotic wrestling, the, the old entertainment industry, session wrestling. It's very multifaceted. I think that's what you need in life, right? That variety. I think so. Diversify your options and, you know, your interests. So if one doesn't doesn't pan out, you've always got something else to do. And I think that's a plus with anything in life. And I always say this, it's all about being the best representation of your presentation, folks. Represent yourself and present yourself in the right way. And what I love about that too, as well, is if you look at life in itself with what we do, whatever endeavor, whatever career that we pursue, it's all about really applying your craft into the amazing fashion that it is. Because if you look at it, really life is an art form. We're all just painting our canvases, right? I totally agree. You know, there's another there's another professional of the adult industry who gets into women's uh, strength and wrestling, and her name is Lady Ayanka. I yes. believe did I pronounce that right? Lady Ayanka. Shout out to Lady O. Wow, Lady O is a badass. Can I say ass on your show? Yes, you can, ma'am. Yes. Okay. I apologize if I offend any of your people. <laughs> no, please go ahead. Lady O is a. Cr- Crazy badass. Like she took her art and her vision and her idea of what she wanted to produce. And she just nailed it. And she keeps growing it too, which impresses me. I think what I like about her too, as well, like we talk about the grind never stops. She's a fellow New Yorker like myself, Long Island represent. What I love about it too, as well, is the cat fighting, how she shoots it. It's really just the subtleties, the intricacies and nuances that go into said fight, how she puts it together. The production is amazing. Oh yeah. I mean, she's, she's skilled as a cinematographer. She knows, she knows her way around a camera. She does, but her ideas about how to present the entertainment to the audience, I find especially captivating. I mean, I really love her style and her vision. Absolutely. And I mean, I look at it from a stance too as well. And I always say this about whatever you want to pursue. Like I love, first of all, folks, if you've not gotten to podcasting or if you want to, I always say this for those that want to just apply their craft, find the topic, do what you love. I mean, some people are going to come at you from all sides, but I think blocking out that negativity, mixing in that positivity, as I look at it from a stance too as well, if you go into everything, mind, body, and soul, putting that effort into it, beautiful magic, beautiful content happens. And in a day and age where content is everything, you just have to make sure you're putting out the right one that really resonates and generates with people. I totally agree with you. And I've been in broadcasting. Well, I started as a cam girl back in 2000 something or other. (laughs) And I, I, I became really good at it. I learned a few things. And when I got into broadcasting, now that I'm no longer in adult performing, I was taught quite a few things by my mentors. And they said, if you were honest about what you want to say, then your audience will find you. And if you are living in your purpose and you're living in your truth, what you do, Mike, what you do on camera, you, you talk to people about things that you find super interesting and your viewers can pick up on that. And so can your guests. So on the show that I do on Saturdays at 4 PM, thank you for letting me do my shout out, by the way. (laughs) Of course. Bye. We talk about things that I find fascinating to the purpose or things that people that come to me for help are learning. And they also have an interest in entertainment in one way or another, or they're still entertainers. Wink, wink, wink. (laughs) 
But that's the thing, too. And that's why also, for those who have not checked out your broadcast, what I really like about it, too, is as well, and I can tell just talking to you here on video and just seeing your work, you're into it. You're very genuine. And I got to say, I love your bluntness and honesty. That's what I really it kind of engages me about you because you know what you want to say. You know what you do. And you really have that way of, as I like to say, the double E folks evoke emotions with what you're doing within your work. So I got to give you kudos on the broadcast. I need to write that down. That's actually a brilliant phrase. I've never heard that before. See, I'm learning something talking to you already, Mike. <laughs> So now, am I calling you Mike or am I calling you John? Because I know you by both. So first, my real name is Michael. My middle name is Chris. So Mike, Mike, Mike or Michael is fine. Okay. Why have I been calling you John all these years? What kind of an S am I? <laughs> it's okay. It happens. It's all right. So I'll, I'll tell you a funny story. So most of the time, like when I used to work for market research, which is something I still do until now, a lot of people thought my name was Mark. I'm like, no, 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 it's Mike. <laughs> it's Mike. So I used to get called Mark a couple of times. It happens. You know what I'm saying? No worries. No worries. Gosh, you were you were so gracious. I really appreciate that. You know, I I was just looking at you a second ago, and I was thinking, oh my god, you look just like that guy I dated when I was thirteen, and he was sixteen, and I felt like such a big shot because he was so much older than me. Guy was built like a fucking football player, and I'm looking at him, and I'm like, wow, that's what a guy's supposed to look like. So you just totally reminded me of that you gave me a happy memory, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I'm happy to give you that memory. And it's funny. I'll tell another funny thing. When I used to work at said market research back in the day. So I started working at it when I was probably like 18, which kind of gave me more understanding of communications to where I wanted to go. So what's funny is a lot of people thought like I was still in high school. I'm like, no. And I think I also noticed that as I've gotten older, I just turned 31. Like I'm still the same me. But what's also funny about it too, as well, what I love about growing up and really getting older and becoming wiser, it's just <laughs> another adaptation of yourself. It's another extension of yourself. You're still you. You're just amplifying yourself and growing and growing. And that's the greatest thing about life right there is growth. Oh my God, you are so right. And I have watched you grow. I've been kind of a, you know, a silent stalker, if you will. I see, I see your material coming out on the net and I'm like, wow, I really wish I was still a whore so I could be on a show. <laughs> <laughs> well, hold on. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about this here because first and foremost, you were the farthest thing from a whore, my friend. You were the farthest thing from a whore. Let's just get that out there. But no. I used to be highly paid at it, man. I wasn't bad. <laughs> no, not at all. But I think what's great about it too is as well, and I'm going to tell you something. I admire you. I admire you wholeheartedly because here's why. I remember seeing your stuff when you were doing the adult entertainment and then where you are now. I think what's great about it is too as well, Um, we talk about multifaceted. You're evolving into what you were supposed to do. I always say God has a plan for all of us. And I mean, you were here and now you're over here inspiring other people and encouragement. So that, that, that takes a lot. It takes a lot to get what you get, what you do. I'm sure you've had your naysayers and people that are like, Oh my God, really? You know what I'm saying? You're going to get those mixed reactions, but it's like at the end of the day, next, I'm going to excuse my language, but it is my dog on show. Fuck them, leave them behind and move forward. The patico. <laughs> yes. Mi amor, the F word. It comes up. Finally. I was waiting for that. I, you know, I, I, one of the hardest things that one of the things that was hardest for me to come forward with, because I'm so well known for adult entertainment was my faith in Christ. And I, I won't get super Bibly on you and your audience, but it was something that I held really dear in my heart. And I wasn't able to talk about it in public because it offended people. And I'm kind of like, oh, but do I really care about that anymore? And then once I stopped caring about that, I stopped caring about other things that offended people. And I, I now teach women and men and they, or I, I don't know what the right words are for that, but um, I teach all people who are adult entertainers or sex workers how to use the skills they already have to build side hustles or full-blown businesses to prepare for when their time in entertaining is over. That's what I do. And I love that because also we, I, what I always say is positivity breeds positivity and what you're doing, mm -hmm. that positivity. But what I've also said, and I also kind of compared it to my line of work here, because like when you first start, and I'm going to say this, first of all, I come from a Catholic family, Catholic myself. My uncle is very religious and I love my uncle to death, my uncle Jack. Uh, he's always talked about, he had an experience where he, he was in a bad place in his life, folks. So probably around in the mm -hmm. 70s, this is way before I was born. Uh, he would drink and he was in a very bad place that one night he always talks about, he would get down on his knees and he prayed to God. Like he pretty much, he, he, you know, repented his sin, so to speak. And he has, mm -hmm. and he's been the same ever since he stayed on this straight and narrow path. And I love that. So what I love about that too, as well, and you're not getting too Bible-y, 
it's it's the fact of the matter is this where we talk about God has a place for all of us and a plan for all of us. Yeah. I think if you stay here, mind you, you might go here, might over here, but if you can get back to here, oh man. And because everybody has a place and just do it. Just go for it. I'm gonna go wherever I'm meant to go because when I get there, it's where I'm supposed to be. There you Boom. go. <laughs> there you go. But no, that that's I mean, that's the, it's the way it has to be. And I always say that to people. And I love this generation because a lot of the youngins nowadays are really getting up here and they want to amplify themselves, especially with content creation and how we have with social media. There's pros and cons to everything, but whatever you do in life, look at it for the pro and don't focus on the cons because what you're doing has a lot of pros staying positively proactive, so to speak. 100%. I, what I also guide and what I also teach by example and, you know, through processes, oh my God, my air is still on. I hope that doesn't mess up your sound. Um, what, what I teach is to see the negative experiences and the catastrophes and the challenges and the failures as learning opportunities. So you can avoid fucking it up again, right. <laughs> basically whatever you're doing. So I, I teach them to see the whole picture. Um, I teach them to see the long game, to play the long game, especially for those new in the industry, how to learn and set up smart business skills, to set up good money practices, uh, social media habits that are going to grow your account to half a million or a million like that. I mean, there are a lot of things that these newer you know, stars and starlets can learn that can not only increase the quality of their career now, but prepare them to leave later. Right. It's conducive and it's very productive. And I, what I like about it too, as well, there's so many, like we talk about pros and cons and everything. And the adult entertainment industry is one of those industries where it has good and bad and everything. And like yourself, we've talked about when I last spoke with you in 2018 to where you are now. I'm very proud just to see, just to see the evolution of the many people. And what I think a lot of people forget is you are that character that you see in front of the screen. But when you get off that screen, man, you're you're a human being at the end of the day. We all have our emotions. We all feel we have everything. And I think a lot of people have the problem differentiating between the two because people don't see the people. They don't see the being. They don't see the spirit, everything that's in here. They just see what they see on camera. And they don't realize the struggles that us as people go through. Oh, my God. Yeah. And it's I, I hear it so often, especially um from social media interactions, fans, some, maybe a few, feel comfortable approaching or treating their favorite star or starlet a certain way or speaking to them a certain way because they've enjoyed them sexually in the privacy of their own home, watching them on camera. And I gotta tell you, I, I've heard endless times where even just yesterday, I, I wish some people wouldn't talk to me that way. You know, I wish they would realize that I'm just on camera and I'm just, I'm pretending. But when I'm off camera, I'm actually a really nice person or I'm very shy or I, I, you know, I'm stressed out a lot and I don't have a lot of time. I hear that a lot. Right. And, and, and it's so funny to me because, I mean, I'm a big pro wrestling guy and I'll say this like this, like look at a character on AEW, MJF. He's a fellow Long Islander. He's this cocky prick. Think of him like back in the day when you had Roddy Roddy Piper, who was the cocky, oh. prick, the antagonist to Hulk Hogan, like the rock. So hot. Yes. The rock and wrestling connection, the Cindy, yes. Lover, everything. If you see MJF, I mean, he's talked about it before. He's just a shy kid from Long Island who deals with ADHD and what have you. He's that he's just a normal person. But a lot of people, because he plays the character so well, you think he's a dick. But that's the game of it. It's playing the character, but also at the same time, the man's a goddamn human being, for God's sake. So people right? need to just differentiate. Do you remember who was it? Randy Savage. Macho yeah, Man, Randy macho Savage. Macho Man, yeah. Macho yep, man. I don't <laughs> well, and and then how um i remember hearing about how his wife got breast cancer and i was like oh my god these are real people i i remember that and then i remember um oh who was it when owen hart had that accident yeah and i thought they were faking it because at that point i then became fully aware that wrestling on tv was entertainment which is hey cool it's still an athletic sport because it takes strength and all that stuff but entertainment more now than it used to be oh, yeah. and i thought they lied about him dying until i learned like he really did and i thought oh my god that was sad no i have like a similar viewpoint and the reason why i say this is because so mm -hmm. 99 was the unfortunate owen hart fall over the edge that yeah. year where he tragically passed like when 2007 happened because they were doing a storyline on wwe where vince mcmahon 
was uh, <laughs> apparently uh, this, the limo blew up. He died. The Mr. McMahon character was dead. And then you see on the screen Chris Benoit. And then, as we all know what happened, Benoit, the man murdered his wife, murdered his son, yeah. and then killed himself. Probably one of the most horrible accidents of pro wrestling history and one of the most unfortunate yeah. tragedies. But I'm yeah. like, like, are you serious right now? Like, I was 15. I remember watching that. And I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah. Did you think that was like for show too when those stories came out? So when the Mr. McMahon thing was going on, I thought it was. I'm like, oh God, what are they doing with Chris Benoit now? And then I'm like, oh shit, is real. Because yeah, then it's all yeah. over the news. It's all over the news. And I'm like, shit. Oh, who was it? Oh God, there was another one that was really big. Oh, when Hulk Hogan and that sex tape thing came out. Oh, I thought yeah. that was awesome. I thought it was awesome. You know what? I love all men. I okay. have to tell you, and some women too, right? But <laughs> But when I heard that Hulk Hogan had a sex tape that they published, I went looking for that shit because I've had a crush on Hulk Hogan since I was like eight years old. So you're going back to like Rocky Three Days, Thunderlips is here in the flesh, baby. <laughs> just watching it last night, actually. And uh, I just started Rocky Three last night because right. I finished Rocky Two. I binge watch all the Rockies because Rocky Balboa is a national hero, by the way. <laughs> I'm right there with you because for those that don't know, if you've never bought it, the Rocky, like the anthology, like I have the five disc set of all five and then I have Rocky. Mm -hmm. Balboa. Yep. You know what I'm talking about. You got to get, you got to get the Creed series now because he just came out with number three. Oh man. First of all, I'm going to say right now, the Creed series has been off the chain. I, I want to see the new one. I hear good things. Right. I hear good things. I've seen it. I've seen it. You're going to walk out of the theater wishing they'd make a fourth right now. Oh, okay. is that good? Wonderful. All right. I cannot wait to see this. But no, that's the point. I think if you have a good story, that's it right there. And I mean, with, mm -hmm. first of all, with the Hulk Hogan sex tape, for those that don't recall. So, Hulk, oh, yeah. So Hulk Hogan was with Bubba the Love Sponge, who was his disc jockey, radio personality, his friend, mm -hmm. his film, filmed <laughs> his friend filmed him having sex with his wife. That was the sex tape. I was in the lifestyle, Mike. I got to tell you, I spent many years in the lifestyle. And every once in a while, if I get a bug up my ass, I might play in that, you know, pool of fun every now and then. Right. So people videotaping, some folks are cool with it while they're in their playtime and some folks are not. But if he wasn't, he should have said so. Boom. Beautifully said, eloquently said. And I think <laughs> what's cool about it, too, is besides if you look at it from the kinky factor, the uniqueness, everybody has a different preference. We're all human beings. And I think it's wonderful just to embrace it, you know? I mean, to each their own, as long as they're not hurting anybody. I mean, what business is it if anybody else is, right? Boom. That's how like, I feel. And I don't give a shit what somebody does with their private parts. Exactly. Well, that's the thing, too. And that's why I've always said when it comes to, mm -hmm. like, like I say, getting involved with looking at, like, lingerie fighting championships. The reason I bring that oh. up is, like, here's the thing. It's LFC. The people look at the L, the lingerie. But I'm like, if you really look at the stance of athleticism, of just working, applying the craft, the fitness regimen, everything that goes into it, and you focus just on lingerie and you just think it's sex and people will use another word smut, you have to really understand and look at it from the lens of like a photographer. Like, are you really worth looking at it? Like if it's like a starry night or whatever art form it is, you have to look at through the lens that is your eyes as an art form. You're just painting that canvas. Now, that is the most interesting perspective that I've actually heard someone apply to the art. I mean, other than the people behind the camera shooting the footage as an audience member yourself, to have that sort of in-depth appreciation for it pays a lot of respect, like Lady O, like Brandy May, and all of the others that, you know, work so hard to make this possible. Right. But that, that's, that's the thing, too. And a lot of people have always poo-pooed on it, and I'll use that. They've shit on it. It's Why? The what? And here's the problem. It's because people don't understand. Like, I'll give you another example. Look at the lingerie football league, right? LFL. It was a big thing. MTV2 used to play those series, right? So you have badass women in lingerie kicking ass and taking names on the gridiron football field. And they're actual athletes. They always- What's the problem with that? Because people just, just are ridiculous. That's why I always say that. But I always- Oh my God. It's the problem with today's society. I've, I'm going to say this. Everybody gets easily offended and it's fucking ridiculous. Like, come on now. From what we had back in the day to now, people just got to stop. They got to fucking stop. I'm putting it bluntly. Fucking stop getting offended over everything. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? I, um, oh man, we are tap dancing with the devil on that one. I know. We're going to light a fire. <laughs> oh, we absolutely are. And I, like I said, I don't go any type of way. I'm, I'm a very, you know, I have my opinion and I state it. And, but mm -hmm. at the same time, it's just like the the cancel culture part of it th that I hate. And I hate cancel culture because it's like, okay, you're going to dig up what somebody said like five years ago. But here's the problem with that. 
Maybe that person has grown wiser in five years. Maybe they don't think the same way that they did five years ago. And you automatically want to stifle them, cancel them. It's ridiculous. Like we all grow as people. We're not the same person. I could tell you straight up and down right here. I am 31 now. I'm not the same person I was when I was like 25. Okay. Like we all grow. Like, come on. Right. Patient, baby. We, we all do. And when you get closer to my age, I had just turned 46. Mm-hmm. At the age of 40, I genuinely stopped caring what people thought about me. And I can tell you, I have never been happier. So I I have experienced what you're talking about, people attempting to cancel me, people attempting to assassinate my character. And you know what? I just go on living my life. And sometimes if I'm able to to speak to them and to break through that that anger, that hatred, I, I find out that when people do that cancel culture thing, they don't really have an issue with what's being done or said. They just want other people to think they belong to that group because it's the loudest. I say, fuck that. You do you, boo-boo. Exactly. Okay. Now you see, you just opened up another one. Bandwagon. Oh, people, do it. Boom, we're opening do it. it. Do it. <laughs> we're opening it. The bandwagon jumpers. Fucking think for yourself. Stop fucking bandwagging the dick riding mm-hmm. people. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I have some thoughts about that. <laughs> Me too. No. And, and here's the thing. What's why I love the platform just because it's one of those things too, as well. And like I said, I, I know what's in my heart. I know the kind of person that I am, but if you're going to fucking like start like shit and just really just breed negativity and just be toxic out there, what the fuck you need to do something that gets a hobby and do something that's better in your life. That's the only you know, problem I say. Good. I got to tell you first, I've learned that people that, that have to go after others in public like that, that have to launch some sort of PR campaign on social media against an individual are really trying to avoid looking at the mistakes they've made in their own lives and the decisions that have put them in a shitty place. So they want to deflect that attention outward and get other people to join them looking at somebody else. So other people won't see how fucked up their lives are. Let let me tell you an example. Okay. I got, I got to bring this up. You're bringing it out of me, Mike. You did it. You opened the Pandora's box. We're doing this today. We are. I'm, we can't we wait. are doing this today. <laughs> I I had an interaction a couple of weeks ago, and it was a genuine misunderstanding. There was no there was no hate involved, and this person immediately went to social media and gathered all kinds of attention for her misery and her oh she was done wrong. And I'm like, were you really though? Were you really though? And and you know just stretching the truth and saying lies. And I actually have receipts. You know, so this person was saying that I hate the adult industry, which is absolutely not true. And that I I speak in a certain way that shits on the adult industry. And I'm like, that's not true either. And all of my shit is on video. All of my broadcasts are recorded live and they are then reposted to nine different platforms. So y'all can just decide for yourself. You just go over to this place and this place and this place and watch the videos. What I do is actually a good thing. So you lady. (laughs) No. Well, that's the thing, too. And what I also always say about it, too, is and it's the problem that we have. If you're positive, a lot of people also kind of generate here. And this is why I always said this. I've noticed this. People think, Mm -hmm. oh, they're just putting on an act. You know, they're too positive. There's nothing wrong with being positive. Okay, and the reason why I put it at this and we'll put a spin on that. What I love about these people that just have to go deep and they put people on blast. And first and foremost, I say this people, if you got a problem with some, either say it to their face, have a conversation about it fucking stop with the putting on the blast shit let's fucking be adults here yeah well well yeah but that's the thing too it's just people yeah, yeah. i know just, call somebody why do you have to be an asshole in public and on social right. media about it exactly there's always that breakdown in communication there's always misunderstandings rectify it rectify the situations people you said rectify i did rectify. i'm immature <laughs> but you no. made a really important point mike um when people are positive it's usually because they're at peace yeah. And that's actually a good thing. And why wouldn't you want more people to be at peace and therefore be positive? What's wrong with that? What kind of an asshole doesn't want somebody to have peace? Uh, as the Batman movies say, sometimes you got to watch the world burn. There's a lot of people in this world that want to watch the world burn. And it's sad. It really is. Yes. Oh, poor Canada, man. That Ooh. that just went off with nobody expected that shit yesterday. I'll tell you what. No. And I was checking on my people back over there on New York. They're they're hanging. Mm-hmm. God dang, man. Fucking New York mm-hmm. City looking the way it did. Shit. 
And Philadelphia too. My mom and my family's in Philly and South Jersey. And she sent me photos and she says her doctor, cause my mom's a little bit older, not super old, but she's older. And she said that her doctor told her not to go outside. It's that bad. Well, it was, I don't know about today. Any updates? Do you know anything about that? Oh, I just saw like just really on the news. It was just, it was a little better than it was yesterday, but it's still pretty, it's still pretty bad. Busy. Yeah. Now yeah. here's what I want to know, Mr. Mike Larkin, who yes. is awesome. And your broadcast is so much fun, by the way. Thank you for letting me curse because not cursing. It, it hurts my head. <laughs> no, you're Sorry. fine. It's your I ever... <laughs> what I want to know is how 400 wildfires started all at the same time. Tell me how that happened. Fucking, I couldn't even tell you, man. I'm just watching the friggin' news and I'm just like 400 wildfires. 400. 400. How does that happen? I don't know. It's the fucking, it's the mm -hmm. world, man. It's the fucking world. Mm-hmm. 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 Mm -hmm. Yep. 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 Hey, whatever happened to that ammonium nitrate that went missing off that train? Oh. <laughs> this is why I love your tweets, folks, because you get a lot of this with you. And I think what's great about it too is the interaction. And you put a lot of facts out there that really a lot of people don't see. So I got to appreciate that. Yeah. I'm wondering if that ammonium nitrate that went missing off that train crossed that border. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know, but I just know that Gavin Newsom went up to visit the Canadian prime minister, Justin Communist, uh, last month, yep. last month. And we all know how California, you know, acts about catching on fire. So maybe he was just sharing some tips. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> I love you for that. Yes. But I know. Thank you. I love you back. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I think that's that's the great part of this. And what I also like, I have to add to this about what you're doing with the, um, really what you do is the darkness living in the light. What I love about it too is as well, not just the positivity and the shedding light on things. I think it's great from the standpoint of really just helping people with businesses because what I yeah. like about that too as well, some people start small. They don't know when or where they want to go. Do they want to go over here? They want to go over there. I think it's important for, if you don't, if you don't know, if you don't do it, if you don't try, then what do you know? I say, if you want to do it, just do it. You know what I'm saying? Just go put your best foot forward. A lot of people have a minimum of two to three businesses that fail before they really find their, their purpose before they really become honest with themselves about what they actually want to do. And I help people cut through that bullshit. I have access to resources, which can give them very remedial, super, super basic business education and really advanced shit that even like makes me like, why would you guys do this to me? Why are you making me learn this shit right now? I, I, I'll pay somebody to do this for me. But what, what a lot of adult entertainers and sex workers, sex workers, they have business skills. They're already doing things that they can apply to a business that they want to do when their time entertaining or being a companion is over. And I help them to see those things. And then I help them to transform their lifestyle to make that desire to be in, in that new place a more fulfilling and easier road to travel. I think what's great about that too is, and I love the way you worded that, I think a lot of people always have that misconception with the adult entertainment industry. Mm -hmm. that they just see, you know, what they see on camera. And I'm like, and I've spoken to a lot of them. There's a lot of smart son of a guns, including yourself that have yeah. these and people don't realize like, Hey, they know, oh, yeah. how to, they know how to do it. And people just, there's that stigma of, they think what's, they have everything here, but they don't everything up here. And it's yeah, ridiculous. It's super cool. I'm so sorry. I just, ah, oh, I love talking to you. You're such, you're such a blast. Speaking of really intelligent adult performers and, and companions, Leia Falcon, I've known Leia Falcon for, oh God, almost 15 years now. Leia is extremely smart. Leia is very go at the flow, very, you know, very kickback, very laid back individual, but she has got a brain upstairs. I would just sit back and listen to her talk sometimes and just, who is this woman? <laughs> She's actually working on her master's degree, I think. And then there's Jules Jade. Yep. Jules Jade is another one who's highly educated, really intelligent, like Brandy May, like uh, Lana Evans is another one, also super intelligent. Like there are women everywhere and men. There are men everywhere. I know that uh, Christian Triple X is no longer uh, mainstream performing, I think. Um, I haven't talked to him in a minute, but he's also highly educated. And Ryan McLean uh, yep. is... Does he still go by that performer name? I believe he's still Ryan McLean, yes. Super intelligent. Super intelligent. And they're everywhere. They are everywhere. And they will shock you because when they're not in front of the public and they're in the privacy of their own conversations with friends or with colleagues, these ideas come out of their mouths about money, about business, about 
faith about all kinds of things politics nobody's allowed to talk about that right now though because everybody's got a bug up their ass <laughs> <laughs> and i love you this is you. <laughs> you're welcome i think what i've also come in contact with like with ariel x who i know you've done work with before in the past evolved fights Another one. Right? yeah Another one. so smart she has that she's very disciplined the jujitsu background oh my god yeah. But it's it's not just her athletic ability and She's her so knowledge smart. of the sport. Right. She runs a studio. Does for those of you out there that may not know someone who does that, it's incredibly difficult to produce content, do the camera work, and then manage the administrative side of running a movie studio. Are you kidding me? It normally takes a team of five to six people just to do the bare minimum. She does it all by her damn self. Mm-hmm. I mm -hmm. did. You got to give a lot of respect to Ariel X on that. I mean, on the all the other oh, stuff, yeah. sessions doing evolve fights, like she's always up in the mix. She still keeps going. I think what I also like about her as well, she's focused. She's like, you know what? Fuck this. I'm not going to do social media. I'm going to do this. Maybe I'm going to go hike. Maybe I'm going to do this. She always yes. stays proactive. I love her. I absolutely love her attitude. She, she, she stands by her belief. She stands by her plan. She doesn't let people deviate her from what it is that she wants to do. I absolutely respect the shit out of her for that. And then I just kind of like being around her when I used to work with her. I would like being on her set, even if it happened to be a long day for whatever reason, I'd love to be around her because she emanates this vibe of awesomeness. And I'm like, yo, share some of that shit with me. <laughs> <laughs> I think you just coined another phrase here. It's the vibe of awesomeness, if you will, the VOA, yeah. if you will. Yeah. Yes. No, you have to have that. I think that's the mm -hmm. gravitational pull, so to speak, of why we all get drawn to friendships and relationships and having moments and memories created and moments and memories yet to be created. You need that right support system, the surroundings you like, you have to have that vibe. I think everything in life is a vibe. And I think if you support, you attract good vibes, it keeps you where you're going. And you know what I'm saying? Like, I love it. Everything is vibes. If you really look at it. I will never forget when, uh, God, it was back in 2012. I was on set with Sammy Spades mm -hmm. and uh, it was, oh my God, Seth Gamble. And it was a feature film that I was co-starring. I wasn't the lead or anything, but I remember how kind he was to me. And it was so long ago and I don't even know if he remembers it, but it was so long ago and he was so kind to me. And I looked at him and I'm like, wow, this really big star was so nice to me and actually held a conversation with me. And at the time I was still new and people were still deciding whether or not it was going to stick around. But I remembered things like that. And the same with Lisa Ann, I came across her leaving set as I was arriving to do work one day and she was just pleasant, just very kind. And I never forgot. So like these people that emanate this vibe of awesome. Thank you so much. Trademark. <laughs> It, they, it stays with a person forever. And I tell all of my people that I say, people might not remember what you say. They might not remember what you do, but they will always remember how you make them feel. And I keep that in mind everywhere I go. And I always say this to people. We talk about, um, I'll put another one out there, Sin and since well, Las Vegas mm -hmm. over here, Sin City. S -I -S -I -N, folks, subtleties, intricacies, and nuances. What I mean by yes. that is, yes, what I mean by that is it doesn't matter. You never know how you can affect one's day by just saying hello or saying how mm -hmm. you doing. It's the little things that count. You're you're right. Um, I I remember one day I had just gotten some really bad news. Um, I'm going through some some things right now, and I got some bad news. And there was a man, and he appeared to be maybe he was down on his luck, you know, outside of the convenience store where I get gas. And he got right up as soon as he saw me, held the door open for me and said, have a nice day. And I almost cried. I thought there are, there are loving people left in this world. And you know what else? And I got to do this. I got to do this because this whole thief in the night thing, right? You know, the story, right? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about? Yes, thief in the night thing. You never know who is inside of that homeless person or that addict looking for help or that angry individual trying to ruin your life. There's somebody inside these people. And sometimes we just need help getting them out. Right. I think it's sometimes you got to break it down, but also at the mm -hmm. same time, like, like you talk about, there's that human being inside said body. This is external, what we're focusing on yeah. here, internal. 
And it's so funny you bring this up because, I mean, I was not too long ago, I'm going to say this right now, I've touched the base with my audience about this. So my mom last year, folks, was diagnosed with inflammatory breast cancer. And I got to say, it was a very rough time because I dealt with it when I was a teenager because my grandmother had it for the second time, but she got through. So she survived breast cancer twice. My mom just got through. Thank God she's cancer free. Um, Thank you. But yeah, no, that's that's the thing too. And I always look at it from a stance too as well. Like I've always said this about podcasting. I love what I do. This is just an extension of me. But I think the mm-hmm. best part about what I do with life, folks, is I get to be a son. I get to take care of my mom. And I also have to realize like everything in life is precious. You know what I'm saying? Because things could go like that. So just yes. appreciating and being in those moments, everything really gets put into perspective. What, you know, like I talking about getting knocked on your ass, going through stuff, everything yeah. puts into perspective and everything comes out into full fold, right? Yeah, right. That that's a beautiful way to to describe that that limitation that is being born to death is you don't know when your last breath is going to be. And you don't know that about someone else either. And if you normally take people for granted, it, it it's a shell shock if that person doesn't wake up the next day. If you don't get a chance to say, Hey, I'm sorry, I messed up. Can you forgive me? You know, make make amends. Re- recross those bridges, build those bridges back to people you've done wrong. You know, say, say you're sorry, sure. say I was wrong. And, th- and, you know, that's beautiful because once they're gone, they're gone. There. Mm-hmm. I, for me, it was like, and this has been a year now since she had her surgery and everything is going good, but I yeah. just remember. So I was in Vegas for the LFC event. I did some ring announcing my dad and I, we were all there and my mom was at home, you know, just do what you're recovering. And we checked in on her and I'm like, God dang, man, I was, my head was in there and I was doing my ring announcing thing. But then it's like weeks later, I know she is going in for that surgery. She went to MUSC or medical university of South Carolina in yeah. Charleston. And I, we were talking, I remember the day going in and she's just like, I'll be honest. I didn't think I was going to wake up, but I said, you did. And God was on your side. So. Like I said, done with her yet. Like that. yep. He's not done with her yet. Nope. <laughs> it's the faith thing and stuff like that chokes me up because mm-hmm. like I said, people don't take anything for granted. Say you're sorry, do what you got to do. Communication's important and life in itself yeah. is important. You know, I, I got to tell you, um, my father and I were very, very close. I loved my daddy. And, and even though I was a 40 year old woman, I still called him daddy. I love my daddy. And no, I never had any daddy issues. I didn't have any father issues. That's how I grew up to be a strong, you know, independent woman was because my father taught me how to deal with life and how to deal with mean people and bad people and tough situations. And when he passed away, I, uh, I stood by his casket and I looked at him and there's just something that just told me he's not gone. He just moved vessels. So I, and then it was like three days later, I actually saw him standing on my husband's side of the bed. And I heard, I heard his spirit tell me that he approved of my husband and I didn't tell anybody about that. But then two days later, my son came and told me that he saw the same thing. He, he described the same thing to me and that my, my father went to his room and told him you're going to be okay. And I was like, wow, that is the freakiest shit ever. And then I started finding pennies anywhere. Do you know the stories about the pennies? Oh yeah. Like the lug and pennies and how much they're, yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. So for all of you out there who aren't aware of what the story of the pennies are from some people of of faith or of spiritual connection to the outer world or whatever your belief may be, when someone passes away, the story is that they will leave pennies in, in odd places that they weren't before for you to find. And that is your departed loved one saying hello or saying, pay attention. (laughs) Um, And the weirder the place the penny is found, it could be in a store, it could be in a restaurant, it could be in your driveway. But I used to always find these pennies and I'm just like, oh, dad, you are a funny guy. And then songs on the music, if you're missing a departed loved one, the songs on the radio, that's your departed loved one talking to you. And I'm like, oh, that's so heartwarming. I love that. <laughs> I've had similar experiences myself. So when I was young, my grandfather died when I was nine. And I remember oh. being, I remember being at that um at the funeral. It was really emotional seeing him in the casket and everything. And then like not too long after that, I remember like I was tired. Yeah, we all take naps. So just I took a nap. I remember I was really tired and I just felt like a hand like right here. And then I woke up. I'm like, I thought my mom was like trying to get me or something. So I'm like, did did you? She's like, no. And my aunt was there. I'm like, did you? No. Did my grandma do? No. And what's great about it, folks, is when I was a kid, my grandfather never held my hand when we crossed the street. He always put his hand around my neck here. So I'm just like, it's a sign. Like, he's looking out for us. Yes. Yep. 
Yes. Yep. You know, I used to get mad things like um, we were talking earlier about being at peace. I used to get I used to get frustrated with people. I used to get upset in traffic. I used to I used to get really annoyed if like a food order didn't go a certain way. And then if you've ever looked death in the face, it changes the way that you operate in life. <laughs> and and now I just I just have come to terms with the fact that if somebody's driving too slow and I'm going to be late getting somewhere because of somebody else's actions, it's, you know, life or fate or God, I believe in God, but some people don't. It's, it's just life's way of keeping you from getting into a fatal car accident three miles down the road, right? Mm -hmm. Or if your food was wrong, it's because you're meant to try a new flavor of something or meant to get a different dish the next time. You know, just, I've always found these silver linings and I am so happy your mom made it through her second, oh my God, round of breast cancer. I can't imagine. I can't imagine. How's she doing right now? She's doing good. She's recovering and she's just, you know, like I said, I think she's just glad that it's all over. I mean, she's doing what she needs to do. She's just, she's at peace, so to speak. Is it gone? Yes. Thank God. They got it all. Yes. They got it all. Oh, oh, that's wonderful. 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 Did she do chemo radiation that? Chemo. Yep. Oh, and um, how long has it been? So she was diagnosed. I mean, she, my mother and I got to say, she's a tough cookie. She's dealt with diabetes. She's dealt with, you know, fibromyalgia, mm-hmm. the whole nine. So yeah, had everything situated. So we found out in 2021, uh, then later in that year, she had chemo and the chemo, it was rough. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. She could hardly eat anything. Like I remember she only had like soup and we had like popsicles mm-hmm. in the house and like, that was it. So I would keep giving her soup, ah, but it was rough. We got through it. Um, And then towards later into mm-hmm. 2022, she had the surgery and uh, again, everything went well. And then a couple months later, we found out she was cancer free, got it all gone. And I'm just like, that's beautiful. Mm-hmm. Wonderful. Uh, so that is so wonderful to hear. I, I know of uh, several folks that have dealt with chemo radiation surgeries left and right. I mean, you know, I'm, I've, I've got that as a part of my life right now and it's not, it's not easy. It's not easy at all, but you know what, if we're meant to be around a little bit later down the road, we're going to be there, even if we have to fight to make that happen. Well, Miss Elizabeth Spragans, I will say, I think you're a tough cookie in your own right. And I think you're going to keep kicking ass and taking aim. Fucking right. Hell yes. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, mom. If you're watching this, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Like, I, you know, it's Mike Larkin. I have to, mom. I'm sorry. <laughs> appreciate that. Thank you. But no, I think that's, that's one of the great things also we get to see here too is as well. And what I love the fact about it is too, there's so many great industries out there. And I think well, what you're doing and helping these guys, helping these gals do what they do, whether it be adult entertainment industry and people as a whole, I can't wait to see what the future goes for you, man, because I'm loving the channel. I'm loving what you're doing. The sky's the limit for you. You're welcome. I, I'm hoping that by next year I will have, I have assisted, you know, enough people who are looking to start or to completely do something new to have a place for them to coach their own clients. I have this beautiful office that my husband built for me and uh, it's on the other side of the Raider stadium, <laughs> not right next door, of course, right. but it's, it's very close to the Raider stadium. And I've got six offices here and you know, I would like to bring in more coaches to start, you know, to start helping more people. So, Hey, if you're out there and you kind of want to, you know, get your feet wet, given life coaching a try, we can get you that education and you can still do adult work and start helping people on the side, start building a clientele list, even though you're still doing the work, I will take you seriously because I've been there. Right. And I think that's what a lot of people are very apprehensive about is because like, mm-hmm. you know, okay, well, will they take me seriously? What have you mm-hmm. Let's say this communication is the best thing, accommodation and comfortability. I've always say that when there be in interviews and whatever the discussion matter is in the forum, accommodation and comfortability, setting the schedules, being making the guests feel comfortable, like anything yeah. in life, you have to equate it with life, accommodation, comfortability, representation of the presentation. Everything, that little nugget, that little subtlety, intricacy, nuances, everything works. And I think within your sake here, with how it equates to you, what people want to start, if they want to communicate, what have you, all it takes is just one word, letting your breath go out here, letting everything flow, manifest, and everything will come into fruition. Manifest. You, are you, are you, are you done with me right now? Are you kicking me off this show? No, I'm just <laughs> saying the manifest part. Would you, <laughs> like, would you say some- goodbye. I was loving you right now. <laughs> No, we, we're, we're, we're coming towards the end, but not quite yet, folks. I just had to put that out there, the manifesting. I love it. I did, man, you, you've you got this bright light all the way around you, and it's just shooting stars at me right now. And I'm going to give you a hug and a candy bar. Like, here, take some chocolate. Oh, I love Hershey's. Oh, my God, right. dude. 
Attention deficit disorder, by the way, used to be used to be a curse, and now it's a blessing for me. No, nope, see, here's the thing: I'm an epileptic, and I seizure disorder, folks. Woo! I, woo! <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you could see it, depending on my hair. It's like right in this area, right here. Woo! 15 staples, folks. Boom. Still have a little bit of the scar there from a bad seizure I had back when I was like 16. But I'm, I'm on the, here's the thing. Proper medication works and also just staying on that path and not letting it define you. Like you mentioned ADD. I too myself have ADD. I remember being on Concerta when I was on my freshman year of high school. So I get it. I totally get it. Mine just keeps going. I love it. I get it. I get it. Yes. When, when you, when I, I, I now I run three companies, I have a corporation and a few LLCs and they all, it's this big tangled web of, Oh God, what did I do to myself? Right. But the ADD helps me see everything at one time. So yeah. Right. Well, that's the thing too. And I think it's very important. And I think what I love about it too, is as well, the ADD and you get what's good about it is folks, you're constantly active and the mind keeps going and you want to go here, there, and just make everything go into fruition. But I think what I also love about it too, as well, there's some people that have epilepsy, ADD, what have you, we all keep still going. We all keep putting our nose to the grindstone, if you will. And that's all you got to keep doing. Mind right. You're right. badass. <laughs> you are, you are such a badass, Mike. I I've been watching you for quite some time now. I think, wow, since 2017, yes. I've been, I've been keeping an eye on your show and you've grown so much as a broadcaster. I'm like, dude, you should write a course for people to, to buy, to be able to do this, what you do. I appreciate that. Yeah. And well, that's the thing too. And what I love about what I get to do is like the messages just come to me and what I love about this forum and folks, like I said, this forum is just for a chance to people to give the platform to tell their stories. We all have our stories to tell. We can write them down. We could do whatever. But what have you is, man, your story is worth it. The journey's worth it. And you will reach that destination. But what's also great about life is we continue to progress. We continue to learn. And as it says in life, the wheels steep keep going and you never stop learning. That's what I always tell yeah. people. You have to do it. I'm I, still learning myself. Man, you, 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 are a, you are a spitfire. I'm telling you, Mike, you're a spitfire. I can't wait to see from how you've grown in five years, where you're going to be in five more years, what you're going to be doing then. I'm like, woo, get you on the radio. Thank you. Yes. That's, that's the goal at the end of the day. But also my goal is to, I think just like we talked about earlier, waking up in the morning, I'm blessed. Like it's one of the things to always appreciate the fact that you wake up in the morning, you know, you brush your teeth. It's little things, have some breakfast, get ready for work. That's the main thing right there. That you can think for yourself and that you have the freedom to do so because we don't know in a year or two, it might not be possible anymore. But Mike, you you are a stellar example of what is possible if somebody just goes for it. And I would love to put you in touch with somebody. His name is Benny Manis out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He is a broadcasting expert. And excuse me. Oh, this is damn air conditioner. I wish I had turned it off. I would like to put you in touch with him. So when we're, when we're done here today, um, I'm going to give you that information. Sure. Absolutely. He can, he can help uh, with like structure and connections and shit. And you can do all that with him because he's helped me all this. Love it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he told me how to do like show notes and shit. And I'm like, yeah, Benny, that's amazing. I call him Benny. <laughs> I appreciate that wholeheartedly, but yeah. And, and before we do close this out, I do have to say one thing. You and I will okay. definitely do a round two. We definitely got to yeah. do one of these. Hell yeah. yeah. And as I always say, with as we go towards the end of the show here, now you are all over the place with your website. You got your Twitter, you got your Instagram, you got your YouTube. Where can we follow you? Oh boy. Um, I, I've kind of, I've kind of saturated the internet all over the place with my shit right now. So I'm like, um, for you just Google, I am everywhere, literally everywhere. It is all joy inspired.com. I also have a gift store, which supports our pro bono work. We do a lot of pro bono work with people who are down on their luck, who can't afford the service or people who can't afford to pay full price. We, um, we offer those gifts for the public to purchase so that the overhead of the business can be paid for and that these people who need help can get it. And, you know, of course, Elizabeth Spragans, because I used to be known as a Laura Jensen and some people don't want to let that go. And hey, I'm not mad at you. I'm not mad. If you want to call me a Laura, fine. I'm not going to kick you in the nuts for it. My name is Elizabeth Spragans, and I'm now listed everywhere as Elizabeth Spragans as well. Least. Oh, one, one last thing, Mike. Yes, all of my accounts have blue check marks, all of them. So if you're finding someone who's talking to you and it doesn't have a blue check mark, flip that F for the finger and, and, you know, come find me. 
Beautifully, eloquently, and bluntly said. I like that. So links to the description will be below for Elizabeth's website, her YouTube, her Instagram, the whole nine where you can follow her. And as I always say to end each and every show, beauty, strength, and dominance, the three key elements that make women the work of art that they are. And Elizabeth Spragans, I include you in those sentiments. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks, Mike. Talk to you soon. Sure.